is right now? Yes. Do you know where Brian Laundry is right now? Yes. Do you know where Brian Laundry is right now? Yes. Do you know where Brian Laundry is right now? Yes. Is your son still alive? Have you been in contact with him? Where do you think he is? Is he really in that park? Did he really go to the park? Did you help him get to the park or out of the park? So this is the first time we've been allowed back in this area. Uh, this is the area where we saw Christopher Laundry with law enforcement. Uh, they went over this bridge on the little tractor that day. And it's now back open to the public. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Just kind of curious what this all looks like. Since we haven't been allowed in here. There's lots of little trails in here. Morning. How you doing? He likes to jump. He's a puppy. Yeah, buddy. He's cute. <laughs> He's everybody's friend, but he doesn't just jump sometimes. Come on. Did the parents know where to go? How in the world was Roberta and Christopher Laundry able just to come out here and find their son? This place is so large and so vast that the foliage has thorns sticking out of it. I mean, it was rough terrain getting back here.
As you're aware, the FBI and the Northport Police Department and our state and local law enforcement partners have been searching the area of the Carlton Reserve for Brian Laundrie, a person of interest in the murder of Gabby Petito. Earlier today, investigators found what appears to be human remains along with personal items such as a backpack and notebook belonging to Brian Laundrie. These items were found in an area that up until recently have been underwater. Area on the other side of this bridge um, where they found uh, the human remains and the items belonging to Brian Laundrie. You can see they've got a lot of police out here. There's been even more police um, showing up this morning. I saw a bunch more FBI agents uh, just within the last hour that pulled in and also uh, several more canine units that came to the reserve. The FBI said yesterday uh, that they would be here for at least a couple days and from the aerials you could tell they've really got the uh, a big chunk closed off several tents set up you can see a lot of media out here now a lot more than what we saw obviously before the big development yesterday the latest I heard from the medical examiner in a text last night uh, he said that he expected that they would have an identity on the remains they would know whether or not it was Brian Laundrie he thought in one to two days possibly longer he said but he was hoping one to two days The FBI confirming that those remains found on a Florida reserve are in fact Brian Laundrie. The FBI says it positively ID'd Laundrie using dental records. He had been missing for more than a month and was a person of interest in his fiance Gabby Petito's death. He has been following this case from the very beginning. So, Brian, you just spoke with police. What do you have for us tonight? Yeah, Nicole, we just talked to Northport Police with an update on everything since obviously the big development yesterday that Brian Laundrie is dead. Still no cause of death, but new, we learned from police, they do believe eventually they will be able to get a cause of death. We know uh, that Brian Laundrie's remains, which are basically just skeletal and bones, have now been sent to an anthropologist, and police right now say they are confident they will eventually uh, be able to get a cause of death. Also new, uh, you know that they found a notebook out there near his remains. We know that that notebook was very, very wet and underwater. Well, now police are saying they do believe that the notebook uh, will likely be salvageable. Also, remember the strangeness with the laundry showing up at the reserve at 7 a.m. and finding the personal items that led to the remains all within just under an hour's time. Uh, police are saying they believe that is just coincidental. They don't think there's anything strange going on there. The way they described it to me is that they think it was just a coincidence that they came across the personal items so quickly. And also, the big question of how did Brian Laundry get away uh, if police were saying all along that he was under surveillance and they had eyes on him? Well, we were under the assumption for quite some time that perhaps they had followed him in his Mustang to that reserve, but then not followed him into the reserve. New just now, we learned that police did not even follow him to the reserve at all. Listen to what the police spokesman just told me. Our intention was to keep an eye on Brian. And clearly him uh, going out there, uh, we missed him going out there. So he left in the Mustang and no one knew that he left in the Mustang. That's correct. I mean, isn't it? I mean, we've been outside the house. I mean, it, was there just no one sitting outside the house watching? I mean, did someone like fall asleep? Yeah. I mean, how do you, it's not like you snuck out the back if he left out in the front in the yeah. Mustang. Well, again, he, he wasn't wanted. You, you, there's certain things you can do with surveillance and intelligence. When you're at a certain point in an investigation, when there are certain charges, where there's these types of things, um, you know, it just, uh, we weren't there at that point in the case. 
So obviously uh, an issue there that they didn't follow him because uh, that is how all of this sort of unraveled with him ending up at the reserve in the first place. As for what happens next with the laundries in the house behind me, whether or not they're under investigation, uh, Northport police said they could not comment on that uh, and that that was being handled by the FBI. Many people don't understand how there was this five-week search and then all of a sudden the laundries go out at 7 a.m. and less than an hour later, personal items found and then the remains. Do you, I mean... And Brian, one of the big questions is how did Brian Laundrie slip out uh, from underneath uh, their, their view when he was at the home? You have now learned that they've got cameras set up outside the laundry home. Police do. Yeah, we've known this for quite some time, that there are these hidden cameras around the house. Uh, we discovered it close to a month ago, but obviously chose not to report it because no one knew where Brian Laundrie was at that point. We didn't want to interfere with the investigation. We know of at least two. There was one behind the house put in a neighbor's yard. There's another camera that was actually hid uh, in a dumpster. We're told that at least some of the cameras did go up before Brian Laundrie disappeared. This is the exact location where Brian Laundrie's remains were found, only a 15-minute walk from the entrance to the park. It took my friends and I about two hours to find it. All we had was this photo as a reference. As you can see, it lines up perfectly. Right here. Found it, guys. Found it. Found it. Uh, the tent was sitting right there. This is definitely the area. Here is what we found to the left of the trail, a few yards from where the tent was. This is a location where Brian Laundrie's remains were found. FBI put orange spray paint on three different locations. As we know, a backpack and a notebook and partial skeletal remains were found. It's presumed that these mark those spots. How did the parents know where to go? How in the world was Roberta and Christopher Laundry able just to come out here and find their son? This place is so large and so vast that the foliage has thorns sticking out of it. I mean, it was rough terrain getting back here. Where those remains were discovered was previously underwater. We're talking about water levels up above almost the chest area. Rattlesnakes, moccasins, alligators. So what about this theory that the area was flooded? It's not possible because the Fed said it was chest high. Chest high. Yeah, there's it's, no there's way. There's not possible. You uh, could even tell mm -hmm. on the condensation from these big trees out here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, the remains in the tent that you saw on the news is right off this trail down here just mm -hmm. a little bit. We've been on this trail. This is right off a power line trail along the big slough uh, canal, but doesn't flood out here. No way. No way. No way it floods out here like this high and they had to wait weeks for it to uh, recede. We're not buying it, are we? No. I mean, I, I know rainwater and all that, dude, but... but Maybe it, ankle deep, ankle at, the, deep. At, the, at the most, but chest high is, is, is ridiculous out here. I mean, it, there's fields. There's fields over here. Um, this is a very popular trail. Yeah. Chest high, chest high water in a few weeks. This stuff would be flooded, man. It, 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 we'd be sinking in it a little bit. I mean, I got no mud on my fields. We've been out, been out here for how long? I got bites and scraps. But yeah, it's just a, it's it's it, just no basically a trail. It's exactly. Just, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Wanted to drive by the house. Now that Wednesday morning, it was a Wednesday morning because I knew we left on the 15th, and and the Mustang wasn't there at 10 in the morning yet. So I don't, and the truck wasn't there either. In my head, I thought they'd got smart moved out of state or something like, you know, I'm like, oh, they're, they're gone. The heat's coming up. The case is getting building at the time. But a few days later, I mean, we did get rain around here, like eight inches in a couple of days or a day. I mean, it rained for, well, almost yeah, a week. But it would week. never go, but it would never go that high. Yeah, I'm saying, this, no, no. I'm just saying we did get a lot of rain. I mean, it yeah. gets so much rain. Yeah. Or, or so run off into the canal, possibly over there, in the canal yeah, right I over mean, there. The closer you get to the canal, the higher the water is going to be. Over here, I mean, like right in here, probably just ankle.